Becoming Sister Wives, Chapter 15, Part 3. I'm afraid that most of the members of our faith are disappointed with our decision to go public. The plural lifestyle is considered sacred, and many people feel that exhibiting in it for the public is like casting pearls before swine. While I am sad to have angered and disappointed so many in my faith, I do not understand how they could tolerate the fact that the world thinks we all marry off our 14-year-old girls to older men. I cannot understand why they are content to live in secrecy and fear. If I had to upset them to make the world a better place, this was the risk I was willing to take. When filming began, it was really strange. It took me a few, it took me a while to get used to having the camera around. Tim would interview us about day-to-day -day activities. I had been lost at a loss to see why anyone would be interested in hearing about groceries, teacher conferences, and cleaning. It's difficult to know how to behave with the camera when it seems trivial to be concerned about superficial things, but if I knew the crew would be showing up for an early morning shoot, I would worry about how I would look without my makeup. Should I do my hair? Can I let them see me in my pajamas? There were totally new concerns in my life. Suddenly, even the most basic things got a little more complicated. Life was pleasantly chaotic before the show really added a new dimension. I worried about my kids' outfits and their uncombed hair. I realized that some of their rooms might look unacceptable to a television audience. I had to repeat them and buy new bedding and bunk beds. I also realized how dirty the house was. I'm a pretty aggressive cleaner, but with five kids and another one on the way. I was pregnant truly when we started shooting. Cleaning became a job in itself. Of course, there was an upside to all of this. There's nothing wrong with a cleaner house and nicer furniture. Once we started filming, I had to learn how to be comfortable about talking about my lifestyle in front of the camera. My previous media training had instructed me to get to the mess get the message across about the points I had made about the choices I made in accepting polygamy, but now I could be as open as I wanted about my own marriage. It was a strange transition to share everything from my love for Chloe and my children <coughs> to the struggle <coughs> both inside the family and outside. Of course, frankness isn't ever adversarial. While I was comfortable talking honestly on camera for Sister Wives, I was hesitant to be open during our press tours. By the time we became publicity for the show, I had learned to trust him and his staff with the honorable when they edited our footage. <coughs> they didn't change what we said for dramatic effect, and they always conveyed the meaning of our confessions exact exactly as we wished. However, I didn't have as much faith in the outside media. I quickly discovered that they would edit our answers to shoot their suit their purposes and tease something salacious from our story. We had made a point of addressing sex in the first episode of our show. We wanted to get it over with so there would be no further questions. We were willing to do this eventually because we were certainly sure that nothing improper would be made of our work. However, during press junkets, the media always hammered away at the sex question. We had always found countless ways of deflecting it. Journalists always wanted to know why we were willing to talk about sex. However, briefly on the show, but not in an interview, it was hard for us to tell a person directly that we didn't entirely trust his or her intentions. Other television shows and news programs have their own agenda and making it impossible to guarantee we came across as we wish. This means talking about sex completely out of the question. The media tours 
were in San Diego early every day. We had a packed schedule of back-to-back interviews. We got tired, but we still had to remain on guard. We needed to watch every word that came out of our mouths so that nothing could be twisted or misconstrued. We wanted the proper messages to get out there, the positive ones that pertain to love and family. Despite our best in- intentions, from time to time we said the wrong thing and had to do a little damage control, but this can only be exposed. We said we are five normal middle American adults with little or no experience in the ways of media. On the media tours, it was our goal to get across the basic facts about our family and debunk the myths that most people assume to us. No matter what journalists asked, we tried to steer the conversation back to something positive. We wanted to come across true to our natures and beliefs, as well as strong, independent adults who come to our faith of our old relation. We wanted to make it perfectly clear that our children make their own choices. They don't have to live politically like me if they don't want to. And most of all, we wanted to convey the stability and love of our family. During our press junket in New York, we appeared on Nightline and saw an interview conducted by Dan Harris at Gromwell. And I was pleased. The night it aired, Cody and I were in our hotel room. It was completely surreal sitting in a fancy hotel room in New York City, watching myself on TV and thinking about the people in the same city watching the same show at the same time. When the announcer introduced our segment, it was clear she thought we weren't ridiculous. Her tone of voice and facial expressions made her her content for us clear she didn't hide the fact that she thought our lifestyle was wrong. After this less than reassuring introduction, they cut to the interview, which included wonderful kids. Clips of our children, when they returned to the announcer, she was smiling. Her whole demeanor had changed. We clearly made an impact. I remember thinking about the millions of people who just watched the same thing and how we might have influenced their thinking for the better. Not all journalists are kind or considerate as Dan Harris was. After a particularly long day of interviews on that first press tour, I had reached my breaking point. One of the journalists had were perfectly brutal to me. He had asked me too many questions about whether or not our lifestyle was fair to our kids. He kept trying to get me to admit I had ruined my children's lives by putting them on TV and exposing them to the public. She really wanted to force my hand to get me to slip up and say something he could use against me. When the interview was over, I nearly brought down, I need my people, I said. And then my family gathered around me. We joined together in prayer. I drew strength from them and was able to refocus. On tour, we really helped to strengthen one another and build one another up, which is phenomenal. Since we were able to travel openly as a family, something I hope all polygamous families will do one day. We can be there for every moment. We rely on one another for support during the tough questions, the long days. We are one another safety net. We are stronger than all than I'd ever imagined. However, traveling as a family is not always easy. Being on the road as a group of five adults is completely new and unexpected experience. It has made our difference more differences more obvious. We've learned that we really have to meet each other's individual needs and that as a group we have to listen to one another and accommodate one another. We have to learn how to express in polite in a polite and constructive manner when someone's behavior is bothering us. I learned, for example, that sometimes I really embarrass Janelle. I can be kind of goofy in public. I thought it was all in good fun, but I realized that my actions are embarrassing. 
They're hurt and I feel terrible for this. But she thinks is it what she thinks it's acceptable in public.